Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. A hot topic says, El Rufai sues Kaduna Assembly over 432 billion Naira probe report. The former Kaduna State Governor Nasser El Rufai has sued the Kaduna State House of Assembly over the latter's claim that his eight-year administration allegedly siphoned 432 billion Naira, leaving the state with huge debt liabilities. El Rufai filed a fundamental rights suit at the Federal High Court in Kaduna against the State House of Assembly on a Wednesday. Now joining us to discuss this is Charles Idoho. He's a broadcaster and a communication strategist. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, I'm glad to be here with you this morning. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. All right, so let's talk yeah. about what's happening in Kajuna State. El Rufai has been, well, allegedly, it's been said that he siphoned over 400 billion naira. And now he's having to even sue the State House of Assembly there in Kajuna State. We want to get your take and just bring us up to speed on what's going on. Okay, uh, thanks again. I, I think what's going on in Kajuna is, uh, is a test of uh, of what I call might in our democracy. Uh, if Verify is able to sail through, uh, we know that um, there are a certain powers that you can't touch in this country. And uh, if uh, the State Assembly, Governor State um, specifically, is able to also sail through in a manner of speaking, then we do know that um, the people who have been chosen, the collective, who represent the collective uh, mandate of some people in Governor State, uh, the whole way. Uh, that's the way I look at it. But again, if you look at the nitty gritty of uh, of the issue, um, do we have on, on the one hand is the state assembly that's um, alleging that uh, if I frit had away the state resources, uh, that they can't even ascertain what he did with that. In most cases, or in some cases, that um, most of the loans that were taken by that government, you know, when you take loans, you attach it to specific projects. That most of the projects that this, this loan were attached to were either not. Um, not executed or they were diverted. So up to the tune of 432 billion. That's a whole a lot of money for Cardinal State uh, to lose because Kansas State is not even there because it's not a uh, river state where you have, uh, you know, wet uh, everywhere. So, but again, I, I think it's everybody it's going to court. It's, it's his fundamental human right as a shrine in our constitution. So uh, in, the, in the days to come, we just look at it, go buy popcorn, all of us buy soda and watch and see how it goes uh, for us, even in the media, for us to feast on, so we'll be able to inform the people uh, adequately. Yeah, but the danger is to our democracy. What do you think the impact would be? We've, we've seen a lot of things happening in almost every state. Uh, in Kano State, we've seen where the government will say uh, one thing and uh, a court that does not supposedly or allegedly does not have jurisdiction will make a pronouncement about another thing and uh, we don't know who is taking which side. We've seen in Sokoto State where it was rumored, according to them, uh, that uh, the Sultan is going to be uh, deposed and then um, the Sokoto State government is telling the vice president that he doesn't have enough intelligence to say what he's saying. So everybody is just trying to hire and fire and do whatever he wants to do. In River State, we've seen where the current minister of the FCT is trying to superintend over the affairs of uh, the state, even from Abuja, and nobody is saying anything about it. In those state, we saw where the um, deputy governor was removed. Uh, we don't know whether it was a legal way or not. He's still in court and trying to do one or two things. But almost every state has a problem. What does this say about our democracy, which I think is, we erroneously call it nascent democracy. It's an old democracy. A child of 25 years is not a small child anymore, mm -hmm. anywhere. It's an adult. Yeah. So what does it speak to our democracy? What do you see our democracy if we leave these things to continue to fester? Okay. First, um, some of the uh, cases you cited to post your questions, uh, they are dissimilar, dissimilar circumstances to the case in point, the LFI, LFI question, okay? Uh, the one in Sokoto, if the state has come, the um, state authority has come out to say there are no plans to depose the Sultan, what they need, what they did was to whistle down his power, his power to choose the kingmakers, his power to do all all the things that um, goes away in the traditional institution in, in, in Sokoto state. In uh, River State also is um, the struggle for power. In River State, the power uh, that was there before, which represented, uh, represented by Wiki, and then now the, uh, uh, Simlalai Fugra, 
And then when you get to a new stage, of course, you know. So all these things, as I said, those things you used to build up your questions are dissimilar to the case point. This case point is about pro probity. Uh, we look at it. Somebody was there before uh, who superintended over the affairs of his state for eight years, and the person is out of out of government. Of course, it should uh, the, the books need to be pried into to know whether indeed he spent the money for I mean on behalf of the state judiciously. That's that's the case in point. That's what I'm saying. That I think it will be too early, to be too uh, premature for us to be uh, casting stones either at Erufai or at the state assembly. For now, that's why I said earlier that. Uh, it, uh, we need to just sit back and um, we'll, we'll look at, I mean, just watch how everything unwinds and then so that we can feast on it as, as media men to be able to inform the people adequately. Well, the state has only came up, they came up with an ad hoc, ad hoc committee to pry into the uh, into the uh, books of air Rufai's uh, administration. And then they came up with a, all the, the allegations that um, he didn't do this, he said he was going to do he got loans that he didn't spend on the desired the, 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 what what he said the loans were meant for. So and then he has found he has now filed a counter a counter claim to say no that the court needs to come to his aid uh, that he was not given a fair hearing. Which of course I think uh, I am I'm in, on, I'm on the same page with him regarding the fact that he was not given a fair hearing because Erufai, having been out of government, no longer enjoys the immunity that has enshrined in the constitution, mm -hmm. he no longer enjoys the immunity. Mm -hmm. So he can be summoned and be questioned. So I wonder why they got some of his uh, aid, some of his uh, uh, appointees, just look at them, uh, question them. But what about the the, the, the masculine itself? I, I, I suppose that uh, it wasn't well done. I, they ought to have called Erufai to appear before them, then again, uh, possibly hire the services of uh, a reputable auditor to also help them look into this book before they well, that's the problem, and sir. then they now okay. start to smear revise uh, uh, email. That's the way I look at it. This was a media man. So what does what does this say about the credibility of the court? Because it, you would expect that anything the court has to pronounce over proper investigation has been done. They've been able to ask certain questions. They've been able to summon this person and you know giving the, the person a fair trial, right, or a fair hearing. So what does this say about the credibility of our courts that are not even having proper investigation and then making pronouncements like this or having a probe report being put out? Okay, look, the, the thing is, I think I, I covered judiciary a bit even as a young journalist when I was a reporter. See, um, let me say this, that we are unduly, we are being unduly unfair, unduly unfair, if you if there's any, any such, uh, uh, such expression in English language, uh, to the courts and the judiciary. Look, you can't win a case that won from the investigation uh, uh, level. Because something has happened, you call in the police, the police have to do investigations. They do. But if, for instance, you are investigating a case and it's done shortly, and then you now file the paper for the court, the court cannot manufacture evidences at all. It is the evidences before the court. That's why the court will tell you, in, in uh, the job we say, based on the evidence before me. So the question is that what is the credibility of the evidence you are presented before the court? If the evidence is not credible enough, the judge cannot do otherwise. So because they will rely on what you have presented, uh, what you have done, what did you do at the investigation level, the, were you were the people properly questioned? Did you do forensic uh, uh, forensic uh, evalu evaluation or examination or assessment? If it requires that before you now go to court. In most cases, what happens in Nigeria that you also have even cases being bungled in court, bungled in court is because number one, we are always in a hurry always in a hurry to have people nailed without necessarily, you know, doing uh, uh, judicial uh, uh, processes before we can go to court. We're always in a mad rush to go to court. And, um, you know, we're hoping that the judge will, will turn the table, the table against our opponent and then in favor of court. It doesn't work that way. Once you miss everything at the investigation level, then the prosecutor, the prosecutor, the prosecutor level will, will also be, also be fraught. You look at the EFCC. EFCC, how many cases are yes, the EFCC won? Because the EFCC is always, always, always jumping. So first of all, do media trial. Try to set aside, try to see how they can whip off sentiment, but probably whip off sentiment, you know, in their favor, and then go to court. But when they go there, when, when the, case is, the case now goes to court, and the judge will look at it, and when they have a very smart, smart uh, uh, prosecution lawyer, 
or no, not even, even, even the even defense, a defense attorney. It's only a case against them. So what you're saying is that the, the credibility of the court, by my own estimation, is still intact. In most cases, these cases are won and lost because of the shoddy uh, uh, investigation level. That, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, well, I, I don't know. I don't know if the courts you covered are the same courts that are in mm -hmm. Nigeria now. Because I've seen <laughs> cases, we've seen cases where the evidence are, the evidences are there. Everything that they need. And then they will bring one small thing and say it's technicality. Mm -hmm. you, you, file, you didn't pay the, the sum of money that you were supposed to pay at what time. Or you didn't bring the case at this moment and all that. And they just use technicalities even with all the evidences and throw out the case. So we've seen all these things and we don't know uh, whether it is because money exchange hands or uh, people have been compromised or all that. But the thing is... Now we are talking about uh, El Rufai not being given a, a fair hearing and all that. And he has gone to court to say they should rubbish the report and say it is null and void. Now, even if uh, El Rufai's case is El Rufai's case, but it is not an isolated case because we have seen where people have run to the court and stopped prosecution uh, pros stop their own prosecution because maybe they have X, Y, Z uh, muscles, you know, political muscles. Mm -hmm. or that. That's what Nigerians think. So if she's asking about the credibility of the courts, it's because of what we have seen. So, so can you compare the courts that you used to know as a reporter, a young reporter, to what we're seeing today? Because that thing, the incorruptible judge that we used to read about, is, doesn't seem to exist anymore in Nigeria. Okay, well, first, the judges you have today are all Nigerians. There is no Ghanaian judge. I, I don't think there is an American or a Liberian judge. We're all, they are all Nigerians. And then the, if, you, if you have a society that decay, um, the people there, was, I mean, the people that are the players, they, they are, they are the, those who are, who are causing the decay. So the judges are not, um, they are not from, from, the, from the outer spaces or yonder places. They are part of this country. So you must also expect that uh, the the decadence you are witnessing in society right now must also, uh, either to a very large extent or a small extent, or to a, or to a very, maybe not to a large extent, also rub off on them negatively. But I, I still maintain the fact that, uh, yes, even though uh, the judicial system in Nigeria, I mean, uh, we have seen that uh, almost has gone downstairs, but I still, I still think that uh, we can still have, um, uh, you know, to rely on our courts. As I said, when you said a case being thrown out, I mean, judges don't throw out cases, uh, or it is not the judges that uh, bring out technicalities. No, that is why I'm mean, in in in, uh, in legal legal terms. That's what I'm sure you may, you, both of you must have heard what is called lacuna. Lacuna is um, I think it's, it's an is um, an uh, whether it was is that um, what's what's that language they use there? Is it not not Spanish? Uh, Latin. Good. Latin. It's a Latin word. It's a Latin word for window, a window, okay? So when you have a smart, a smart lawyer, either SAN or a non-SAN, on your side, what they do is to look at those windows, which they call lacunas. It is the, once they find a window in the prosecution, they latch, they latch on it, and that's exactly what they're going to be using to knock out whatever evidence is which is what is called technicalities so lawyers in most cases don't just go to court as i said i was a reporter in court i visited most countries that time lawyers don't just look at your case the way it is another and then go to they say okay they, they applaud you they will that's why they read all these volumes of books they look at uh, a case between uh, 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 jacob and versus the government or versus so, so they will look at it and also look at the precedent if there are precedents to that case, they will cite the precedent, what happened then, what the judge did, and all that. So if there are windows, what they call lacuna in those cases, and they latch on on it, immediately then the, your case can be, can be rubbished. That is why I said prosecution has to do everything possible to ensure that the evidences that they have, they are watertight evidences, evidence, that even the, uh, the, 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 other, the other side of, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the, uh, the case, those who are, uh, you have the prosecution, you have the defense, so that the defense, uh, the defense team will have no windows to look at. Once we're able to do that, 
then in most cases, the judge will look at it and the judge can never go against the evidence uh, or the evidence is the body of evidence that uh, that he has before him. He will always raise his judgment if it's uh, uh, if it's about two member or three member or four member uh, uh, justices or judges. They will always look at this and then and then and and then uh, raise their judgment according to the evidence before them, not to manufacture any evidences or manufacture technicalities. They rely on on the arguments. They rely on the evidences. Then they rely on what these lawyers bring to the table when it has to do with uh, adjudication. All right, so we're joined now by, with um, Barrister El Zubair Abubakar. He's a legal practitioner and a public analyst. Um, so we're just talking about the fact that El Rufai is, um, you know, suing the, the Assembly, the State House of Assembly of Kajina State over the probe report. Good morning, Barrister. Thank you for joining us. Can you hear us? I can hear you. Okay, you okay. can hear us. Okay, Let, let's go to okay. Barrister. Yeah, so, I mean, we just want to get your comment on this. The fact that um, El Rufai is ac actually having to sue the, the State House of Assembly. You are a Barrister. You're a legal practitioner. What is what is it about this case? Do you think it's an unfair hearing? Because that was even something we're talking about, that he did not just get that fair hearing. It was done swiftly, and then there's a probe report on him that says he has siphoned over $400 billion. What do you think about this? Mm. Uh, under our Constitution, and under all our extant laws, and under the principles of natural justice, once somebody is accused or indicted, or even there's a prompting that he has committed an infraction, an offense, or an administrative uh, slip. And a committee, either administrative or judicial, is set up to look at the issues about which he is being accused or indicted. What the Constitution and the other external laws require is that whatever the case, and no matter how important this investigation might be to the investigating authority, the person accused or indicted must be called before the indicting committee or the judicial or administrative committee. What happened in Kaduna State with respect to the former governor is that uh, there was uh, a slip from the governor of Kaduna State who said that because of the indebtedness of the state, the state government is unable to go on with the payment of salaries and wages of workers. So because of that, he laid the blame at, this, at the footstep of the former governor of Kaduna State, saying that if not for the debt that was collected and the misuse of that debt, probably the Kaduna State government will have been able to pay these uh, salaries and wages. And so... He was calling on the State House of Assembly to look at these issues. The State House of Assembly composed a committee which under the Constitution is right because all budgeted sum, including grants and loans and all other sources of money that will accrue to Kaduna State is the responsibility of the Kaduna State House of Assembly under our Constitution to investigate and ensure that those monies are used judiciously for the people of Kaduna State. So there's nothing wrong with setting up that committee to investigate. Unfortunately, in the course of investigation, the committee failed to call relevant and necessary parties who will assist the committee, not only in its work, but they will ensure that the fundamental rights of the parties affected and those accused were already taken care of. For example, the present Kaduna state government was the one who sought for the loan at the National Assembly on behalf of the Kaduna state government. In my view, the Kaduna State House of Assembly ought to have invited him so he can give out the protocols and the procedure under which the loan was granted. That is one. Secondly, those companies who are involved in the bidding and the tendering of the contracts about which these loans were collected, we are not even called before the committee. So how will you know? How will you know which company? How will you know how much? How will you know whether the government the, the, the government paid the money that was bidded or government did not pay the money that was bidded or that government even should change the people of Kaduna State? How will you know that? There's no basis because they didn't call any of the companies. 
Number three, the, the commissioners they called uh, left a lot of gaps in their statements because a single commissioner cannot be able to answer for the questions which the committee required. And so what was needed was to call the, the helmsman himself, who was the former governor, for did not even call him. So, and the committee was able to wrap up its work without calling the former governor. These three essential elements are important. Then the work of a legislative committee is very, very fundamental that the press must be called. Because all these things ought not to be in secret. It's supposed to be an open, uh, clear, transparent mm -hmm. uh, investigation. Everybody that will have appeared before that committee should have been beamed so that the world will hear it. After all, the money is not for the National Assembly. The money is not for the governor. The money is for the people of Kaduna State. And you are saying that it has been misappropriated. The people of Kaduna State under our law are entitled to know and to see what procedure the House of Assembly adopted. More so, Kaduna State Government and Nigeria as a federal government has adopted the, the, the Open Government Partnership. So nothing should be in secret again in respect of how our rulers are taking our affairs and then ruling us. These are some of the infractions which I think prompted the Kaduna State Government to, to go to the Federal High Court yesterday. First, to challenge the indictment. Second, to challenge the directive of the Kaduna State House of Assembly that the EFCC should take up the matter. Number three, to, 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 to clear his name that he has been defamed. I think those are the issues. And you can see the mistake clearly in the work of the House of Assembly. After indicting him, the Kaduna State Government has a Ministry of Justice. The Ministry of Justice is responsible for prosecuting all issues pertaining to crimes when they arise against the government of Kaduna State. But the government is aware that if they had taken that report to the Ministry of Justice, probably the Ministry of Justice will have informed or advised them about their failure to have called the necessary and important parties who, whose presence will not jeopardize the basis of this investigation. I am sure that they have now realized, but it is too late. I also want to say that probably the Kaduna State House of Assembly did this deliberately. One, to give a window to Governor Erufai so that the political uh, stability between him and those ruling Kaduna State will remain. And then to fulfill the request of those people who had demanded that he should be pro. There are political angles to these issues, but I think uh, the legal angle is even more important because he was not invited. And you cannot invite somebody uh, or ask to prosecute somebody when you have not had the person. The maximum of the law is, in Latin, audi alteram patem. Audi alteram patem means that no matter the issue, no matter how grave it is, no matter how much you feel that the person has committed an offense, you must invite him and hear his own side of the story. I think that is the failure which is fundamental from the side of the Kaduna State House of Assembly. Sorry, sir, let me add this. The present government of Kaduna State is mostly constituted by people who were in the older past government. In fact, the present deputy governor of Kaduna State was the deputy governor for El Rufai. Most commissioners were in that government. Most members of the House of Assembly are still members of the House of Assembly. Some who were in the House of Representatives are now commissioners. These people ought to have been questioned because one way or the other, a lot of them were connected with this law. But you see, uh, the problem with uh, the justice system, uh, especially in this case, the legislative administrative system, do not take care of the right of the fundamental rights to fair hearing of all the parties that were involved. Mm. That means the people of Kaduna have been hoodwinked <laughs> because <laughs> that angle of, you know, maybe uh, trying to have, have the window where uh, the political, you know, uh, players will still be in good rapport mm. and making the people think that we are doing our job so well is mm. still there. But, well, okay, Charles, I, I mean, let's just ask, what's the way forward mm. now? We have just about a minute to wrap up. What's the way forward? How do we go from this, especially with El Rufai having to sue the state of um, the state house of assembly? 
on the way forward, uh, thank, I, I, I want to thank the barista. Uh, you can see that uh, we're on the same page here, yes. right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, succeeded in expanding the scope of what I started earlier. The way forward is to uh, do the needful, give the uh, five fair hearing, uh, demand that they have hastily, hastily suspended the commissioner for for finance. Uh, that's his name. I think once she's out or something, should be recalled. So that the man, since the man was was also commissioner under the five, same same portfolio, they should also call them. Perhaps reconstitute another body we will, and then call in auditors. And then this time around, let them give a reply invitation and let them have a fair hearing uh, from him so that everybody will be happy. Just like the minister said, the money we're talking about is uh, not the money for individual, but money for the collective uh, patrimony of uh, the entire citizens of Kaukaduna State, who of course have been shortchanged according to this probe, according to this allegation. So they have a right to uh, see what's happening, even when the probe is going on. It should be beamed live. Let them call journalists, let them call uh, TV stations, so, so that the people uh, for whom we are fighting, we, exactly, we know exactly what is happening, so that they also can be sure that justice will be served uh, justiciably, I mean, judicially and, and uh, uh, fairly uh, in, in the long run, in both in the short and in the long run. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, we want to say thank you for coming. This is where we have to wrap it up on this segment. Thank you so much for joining us and discussing thank this you. topic with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. All right, so we're speaking with Charles Ideho, he's a broadcaster and communication strategist, and also barrister El Zubair Abubakar. And we've just been talking about the fact that El Rufai has sued the State House of Assembly of Kaduna State over the probe report of 432 billion naira. Well, still ahead is talking about insecurity, over 2,600 people dead. 50 communities record 135 attacks in Benue State. We'll be discussing that next. We'll see you next.